JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles Cuts, and today is the 1st of February 2022. So yeah, now we can say that we have um, finished with one month of this year um, and on to the next 11. Um, but yeah, guys, before we jump in into the charts, as always, you have a quick, uh, uh, quick kind of, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and is not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com, and yep, click on the research tab right there on the top. So. Now then guys, jumping into the charts. So yesterday, um, the equity world uh, did push nicely to the upside in the in Europe and the US. Um, and here, for example, Nikkei did follow suit initially, did push north, it did jump above this area. And it talked about this 26,955 level, uh, or I wouldn't say level, actually area more because we're looking, we're never looking at, um, at exact numbers. So it did jump above that area um, and stayed above it. And in a way, we're still kind of aiming for some maybe higher levels. We're aiming for um, this uh, this downside line uh, taken from the high of the, um, let me just quickly click that. There we go. On the um, fifth, uh, taken from the high of the 5th of January. So yeah, um, if um, if we do see a push higher, we'll be very careful near this downside line because we, around here, we also have the 21 day EMA. So in a way, um, something, like this could still happen. So I'm going to drag this arrow right here just uh, for now. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Um, however, if it starts dropping back uh, low to the downside here, back below this area, uh, maybe uh, we're not really done here with the downside yet. So be very careful on that, guys. In order to con get a little bit more comfortable with the upside, well, a break of this downside line is needed and then we'll just take it from there uh, the German index tax so yeah uh, good push higher uh, yesterday uh, did close in positive territory I mean there was a moment where it fell back below the 200 day EMA however yeah because you can see um, most likely the positivity in the US market kind of did uh, help out here and DAX to push back up. Uh, so, yep, uh, we saw a good move higher and uh, we um, moved closer to that uh, downside resistance line again. Now, one thing I need to get rid of here is the Fibonacci, although, as you can see here, the 38.2% did uh, this level here did provide good support. Um, so, maybe coincidence, maybe not, but to be honest, I mean, we'll, uh, there are uh, other things to consider here. And uh, uh, let me just get rid of it. There we go. Um, for now, I would say this way that uh, from the short term perspective, that if um, if the um, if the index continues to trade somewhere above that 200 day EMA, then uh, yes, we could see a move higher, we could see that push towards that downside line, uh, which could provide resistance. And then yes, um, and then yes, we, we will take it from there because if it breaks that, then certainly great news, more buyers could join in, especially the fact that uh, on a break of this downside line, the the, and the price could also be already above all of its EMAs here on the daily chart, which means that, well, maybe, like I said, uh, this could um, attract a few extra bulls here the, into the field. Now, 
um, in terms of levels. Now, as you can see here, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm lacking a little bit, a few levels, but uh, to be honest, I'm going to keep it short and simple. Um, looking at this, I mean, this is this area right here, the high of the 21st of January could be monitored. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the best level here to watch, but um, could be um, a, a level, this 15,729, uh, 20, sorry, 28 zone. Um, but before that, um, what you can do here as well, let me just quickly um, put this on the chart. This inside swing low near the 15,630 zone. So a nice good pop above it yep may signal like i said may signal that potential move higher but again depending on how all this is going to play out because um uh, the moment um everything's kind of a little bit tricky here i mean we're still below the downside line guys um so that means that in a way if it stays intact then well we might see another slide here so that's why I don't rush into the that upside yet unless we uh, unless we start breaking this downside line. But even then, we need, we'll, we'll have to have a, a careful stop loss just in case this suddenly, let's say, you know, gives us a false breakout and then reverses and drops back below this downside line. So we've seen that happening, and uh, well, I mean, we'll just have to we we always have to protect ourselves against uh, such. Uh, scenarios. Now, uh, the cash index is currently sitting at around 15,528 territory. Um, so we're above, yep, we're nicely above the yesterday's close. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're still below this downside line. So uh, this, this idea that I just mentioned uh, kind of could work out. But again, like I said, for now, I'm aiming for this downside line. And then I want to see what's going to happen after. If it breaks it and stays above it and stays above all of its EMAs here, then that's wonderful. Yep, more uh, more buyers may join in. But if it doesn't, uh, well, I mean, be careful. We might see maybe a bit of a, a, cor uh, a move to the downside again. Now, Euro stocks 50. Um, haven't looked at this one for quite a while, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, looking at this picture, I mean, there I have a line here or something that you just, yep, there we go. They need to get rid of it. So in general, let's clear up the chart a little bit. Um, so uh, overall, uh, without any, without drawing any lines here, um, overall we have a kind of similar uh, picture as with on, as as on DAX basically because um, so we could potentially have here a double top pattern. But again, a uh, break of the so-called neckline is still needed. I mean, still some confirmation is required. So yeah, I mean, it's not really everything, not, not everything is not really that straightforward here. So um, we do have a bunch of obstacles. I mean, we can jam up all these uh, lines here into one, I mean, and, and create this kind of one big fat uh, line and uh, uh, kind of one this 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 kind of you know this territory right here um so basically in other words i mean if we clear up this territory then yes uh we could go maybe for some lower levels because this would this would confirm uh forthcoming lower low and then potentially we could slowly uh target um you know even lower levels but um the fact that we're kind of we moved back above the 200 day EMA that of course uh, gives a bit of uh, hope here for the buyers the only little issue here for me is this uh, little short term uh, tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 5th of January so in other words yep if you're looking for some upside on this well at least wait for a break of this of uh, this downside line because at the same time we would get a nice good push above all of the EMAs here on our on our daily chart. For the downside, from the shorter term perspective, if we see another drop below the uh, below the 200 day EMA here, and uh, yep, that could uh, maybe open the door towards lower levels, and we could then aim for this um, kind of um, this uh, these uh, all these lines here that have jammed up here. But um, yeah, we'll take it from there, guys. If we do drop below that 200 day EMA. Um, now jumping into NASDAQ 100. So yeah, uh, good performance yesterday. Look at this beautiful move to the upside. Yesterday in general, um, the market, all sectors in the US were in positive territory, even energy. 
and uh, but the best perform performing sector was consumer cyclical. So in, in there you have your companies like Amazon, Tesla. Tesla was, by the way, the I think the biggest one of the biggest gainers. Um, so yeah, good performance from Tesla around plus 10 percent, a little bit more than that. But nevertheless, um, yeah, in general it was um, it was a good day for uh, for for stocks in the U.S. Um, second in line was technology and then followed by communication services. So technolo technological stocks did perform great as well. Um, we, uh, so yeah, I mean, your, you know, your Facebooks and Netflix. Um, and so yeah, those kind of uh, did well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, Netflix is a communication uh, service in this in communication sector sitting in the communication sector um so yeah and in technology you know you have your uh companies like palantir uh, snowflake um you know uh, sofi the new newcomers uh, those did well um so yeah um looking at this picture here i mean on um uh on nasdaq we can see that yes it pushed higher it pushed towards that 200 day ema so we touched it um from underneath it, it, this is where it ended up being uh if we take a look at the cash index right now we'll see that the price is sitting at around 14,888 zone so basically just fractionally below that 200 day ema so on one hand we did get a good move on the other end um the fact that the 200 day ema is still providing resistance that of course is a little bit on the um we're kind of it forces us to be a little bit on the care careful and cautious side and of course the fact that we're still trading below this downside line that doesn't help as well um so it basically can it still keeps the downside scenario on the table um so for now if we do jump jump above that 200 day ema then yes i'll aim for some higher levels i'll aim for this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 4th of january but um of course if that gets broken then yeah we'll we'll you know get a little bit more exciting with the ups excited with the upside but um i have this level here highlighted still um so Although if we could see a push above this downside line, I mean, the question here, would would we actually, you know, go all the way above the 100 day EMA? Because at the moment, as you can see, I mean, right now, the, mm, the 21 day EMA did cross the 100 day EMA. And of course, this could be seen as a bearish indication. So in other words, this move higher right now could be just seen as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying. Last time, the 21 day EMA crossed the... Uh, the 100 day EMA well was back in um, March yep there we go March of, uh, so we started off in in the end of February and you remember March uh, 2020 the, the you know the all the, the big kind of declines here um, and uh, yeah so we have crossed this and uh, well we haven't been below this um, we haven't been below the 100 day EMA with the 21 day EMA uh, since then. So, yep, um, for this is something to consider, guys. I mean, at the moment, looking at this picture, um, yes, we're seeing a nice little rebound. But um, again, will this be just part of a corrective move, um, a corrective move, um, you know, before another possible leg of selling or actually would, you know, ignore everything and just push back to the upside. For me, for now, at this point in time, I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the downside overall. However, um, I might be wrong if uh, if we start breaking this downside line here, uh, because again, like I said, for me, this is... Um, this is a bit of a, a worry signal here, and uh, I want to be cautious. And like I said, if somehow, for example, the index struggles to, you know, to remain below, or sorry, above the 200-day EMA in, in the upcoming days, I mean, that could, um, yeah, that could be a bad, uh, bad signal here. And the fact, like I said, that the 21-day EMA already crossed the 100-day EMA last time it did. So in March, um, in March 2020, when we had that, you know, big crash, um, can we see, you know, can we see a nice uh, larger correction here? Oh, and by the way, uh, you know, this is something um, what I wanted to show you as well. Uh, thanks for reminding me um this right here so um why did this jump uh, uh how 
do you ah there we go there we go so uh this right here guys uh the the fibonacci uh, level so you as you can see if we draw it from the low here of that mark lowest point of march till the uh, to the highest to the all time high uh the current all time high then you can see that we have already yep we reached we did the 23.6% retracement on the fibonacci uh we did drop a bit lower here i mean we do don't always never forget uh never forget about the so-called midpoints in between the Fibonacci levels. Now, those are the markets do love those as well. Um, and uh, uh, you can see here, for example, we did drop lower. We did kind of test that uh, midpoint uh, around there, guys. I mean, it's not it's, like I said, it's never a, uh, an exact number. So approximately around here, we reached that uh, midpoint between the 23.6 and the 38. Uh, two uh, percent so yep um, and we then kind of reversed and pushed higher now uh, will we go towards uh, you know lower levels here like for example the um, the, the the fifth or the 38 the 38.2 or the 50 well we'll just have to wait and see because at the moment in general the 38.2 looks quite attractive because it as you can see here and uh, it did have good support uh, back here um, back in May um, of 2021 um, so yeah I mean there is still potential for this to move lower and we do have very attractive levels here so uh, the 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci here could be a good one to watch but we need uh, first of all we need that strong drop lower and one of the confirmation uh, breaks could be uh, maybe a move back below the 23.6 percent so that's why I have it highlighted here um, and uh, I'll get rid of this uh, for now just to not to over, you know cramp up the um, the chart here but if it falls back below the lowest point of October of last year then well this is where we'll start worrying again uh, DXY dollar index guys so uh, yeah reversed lower and fell back below the area here so uh, that's quite interesting and uh, of course this doesn't look very well I mean I said to you yesterday that if we do drop uh, below uh, if we do drop back below this highlighted territory and also this 96.67 zone then well I mean maybe this could lead to some lower levels for now what I'm going to do I'm going to aim for lower levels but I'm going to initially aim for the 21 day EMA I want to see if it's going to provide some support or not um, if not then well I mean further decline towards this upside line could be possible and now jumping into gold very quickly so uh, of course uh, the stronger uh, sorry the weaker dollar is helping out gold here uh, you can see the gold managed to push back up now what I talked about yesterday I said that if we do uh, stay below this upside line then I'll aim for lower levels and I'll, and I'll get more comfortable with the downside if we drop below the 1778 zone well and this is my well, this was my point exactly because uh, we kind of we didn't get that drop below this and instead we have a push back above this upside line so can we travel back and stay above this 18 05 territory well we'll just have to wait and see for now everything's kind of shifting in that direction and of course keep your eyes on dxy because um if that continues to slide then well gold could get back here to the upside and we could aim for higher levels but for now <clears throat> the fact that <clears throat> excuse me guys um So the fact, uh, there we go. My my voice got back and uh, got back again. Um, the fact that we traveled back above this upside line, that of course, um, kind of uh, you know creates a little bit more positivity among you know among the traders. Um, the only thing is that I think we need to get rid of this upside line. No longer needed. Uh, now what I'm going to keep an eye on here is this 1805 zone. If we push above it, then I'll aim for the upside. If we don't. Uh, then maybe a bit of a curved move down here could be possible. So that's where, uh, like I said, the upside line is no longer needed. And I'm going to stick stick to uh, my my support and resistance levels for now. And of course the um, the EMAs, uh, which of course at the moment don't really help much because the the commodity continues just to oscillate around those. 
but nevertheless uh, they they might provide good support and resistance areas uh, WTI oil very quickly on that one so pushed nicely to the upside of course the weaker dollar did help out here and uh, yeah there we go boom we pushed above this 87.90 zone we stayed above it and now we're above this upper side of the rising channel that I kept on talking about now can we see a further move higher well uh, let's wait and see my next target is this one uh, let me just uh, zoom here um, there we go uh, this one right here so the low of the 11th of September of 2014 that's where I'm aiming at right now guys I mean look at this I mean we have you know we haven't been at these levels uh, these kind of levels above 90 well for you know for quite a while and uh, this is what where we are heading right now after we had that you know tremendous drop here in, in oil in you know in, in 2020 in March um, in April sorry um, and uh, yeah now we're just on you know on a straight move higher now uh, the question here is uh, what are we gonna do here are we gonna continue aiming higher and or are we gonna you know take it with everything with a pinch of salt here and uh, maybe expect this one to drop back down now for now um, as long as it stays above the upper side of this rising channel of formation I will continue aiming higher of course and my next target is the 90 point um this 90 90 where is that 90.46 if i'm not mistaken yep 90 for well, approximately around 90.50 um that's going to be my next target and uh, we're not far from there and as i said i'll aim for that only if we stay above this upper side of the uh rising channel if we just fall back below it i'll take a bit of a neutral stand again and just observe uh, the price action until I get it clear, you know, um, until I'm comfortable with with it again. Uh, Litecoin. Uh, quick update. To be honest, not much to talk about here, but um, uh, we have a crypto which is holding on to this 104 zone, which is great news for the uh, for the buyers because we are st still above this lowest point of July of 2021. Um, however, we're still below this tentative downside resistance line. Medium term, of course, but um, still and tentative, of course, but um, still a downside line. Um, in order to go for higher levels, we need to see a break of that area. And ideally, for me, I would probably need to see a, somewhere, a push somewhere above this 126.80. This way, um, more buyers could join in, and uh, yep, we could aim for the 108 EMA near this 154 level, uh, marked by the highest point of January, or we could go, you know, further and further up. But at the moment, uh, it is how it is. We're still hanging above that 104 zone or in general above that 100 level um, so can we see a, <clears throat> a further decline well we'll have to like I said we'll have to wait and see we'll have to wait for a drop below the 104 level first and we would need to see the crypto staying below it now um, AUD and ZD one of my favorite pairs um, to be honest I mean look at this uh, I told you before and I said mentioned this before I mean as I love it because it just is very very technical um, now I said before that we might see a little bit of a decline here, maybe a bit of a corrective move lower, and if it holds somewhere above this hurdle, this 1.0650 or this 21-day EMA, we might see a nice rebound and a push higher. And look at this. I mean, just just did it. It's, it seems like it's listening to me and it's just doing what I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, it's uh, this is the... Mm, this is that psychological problem always because when something kind of starts working all the, all the time in your favor um, there will be that one moment where it will you know it will not do what you want it to do and then and they'll and then you'll get frustrated you'll start trying to recover and basically you'll you know you might end up blowing your account so uh, yeah uh, be very careful with that aspect of human nature um, so yeah, um, for now, looking at this, I mean, everything's working out perfectly. This 1.0740 level did provide fantastic resistance. Um, can we go higher? Um, well, yes, we can. I mean, we sure do have all the kind of possibility for doing that. Um, by the way, the um, the Australian, the RBA, Australia, Australia's RBA came out today with, uh, and they kept the interest rate the same. Um, so uh, we saw that you know they're they're they sounded quite positive uh, in a way uh, with their economy, and uh, I mean we can see that 
yeah, in general, it, the Australian economy, economy is seems to be holding up. Um, the only thing is that uh, we saw a bit of a decline today in the home loan numbers and retail sales, uh, the preliminary figure. And uh, yeah, that came out as a disappoint as a huge disappointment disappointment i would say so the previous number was it's plus plus 7.3 the expectation was already for plus 3.9 so a much lower number um but um yeah the actual number came out at minus 4.4 so so yeah we're seeing a bit of weakness in the australian dollar um however uh still in this particular pair um i mean it's a, the new zealand dollar is not the strongest one right now and uh well i mean you can see that we're trying the bulls are trying to push the uh australia the this pair back up and another thing that's working in favor of of the australian dollar is the is the um is the um stronger uh the the, the kind of the uh, you know the risk on environment in the equity world right now so so yeah all that is playing out nicely for this pair so i mean uh, for now i mean i could still aim for some higher levels especially if it pops back above this 1.0740 level if it does that then i'll aim my next target is the highest point of uh, june of 2021 near the 1.0113 level um <clears throat> usd jpy uh very quickly on this one flagging out seems to be like doing that so um after we broke this downside line which actually we can get rid of now um the pair traveled back up it climbed back above the all of the emas here and stayed above those and now after reaching this 115.68 zone it did correct lower however looking at this as you can see here it seems to be that it is forming a possible bullish flag so can can this be the case um this is where i'll have to um oh, nope not like this way uh readjust let's me let me just grab this um upside line right here and uh yeah um if we do drop uh, a little bit lower here maybe towards that 21 day ema and if that 21 day ema does provide good support another rebound here could be possible guys so keep that in mind um for me it's for the downside well i mean i would need to see initially i would need to see a, a good drop below this 21 day ema and then yes i could aim for lower levels again but at the moment i'm aiming for that 21 day ema i want to see if this is going to end up being a nice bullish flag usdchf guys uh one of my favorite ones also uh yep correcting a little bit lower however everything's still fine now the only thing is what i said yesterday was that if it corrects lower but stays uh, above this 0.9275 territory then yes this could kind of give me a bit more reassurance about the upside the fact that it dropped below it of course that cautions me cautions me a bit uh, here um the last kind of chance here for the bulls to step in is somewhere near this downside line which could you know act as a nice trampoline and then we could see that push higher but even then i would still actually prefer to wait maybe for a push above this hurdle above this 0.9275 zone and then kind of go for some higher levels so this area right here all this uh will be somewhat of a kind of neutral one for me maybe cautiously very cautiously bullish but um yeah because it still has a chance to you know drop back below this downside line if it does that well we're you know the downside is back on the table uh gbp nzd very quickly on this one and uh yeah we have uh, a good hold up near this 2.04 or in general 2.05 level so rounded up here a little bit here um so i think that even did, didn't even reach the two point no it did reach perfect hit look at this i mean this is just amazing um beautiful touch of this 2.05 territory and then we are getting that reversal now to be honest I'm looking at this and, uh, well, I'm going to be very careful for now. Uh, we did have a, a move, a strong move already, so maybe a bit of a, a retracement here could be possible. <clears throat> If we do drop, for example, below, let me just grab one of these lines and recycle that. Always recycle, guys. Um, if we drop below yesterday's low here near the 2.0367 something like that area um then yes i'll go for a larger correction here to the downside guys towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 8th of november um for the upside pretty straightforward the push above the 2.05 level is needed in order to go for some higher levels uh euro jpy very quickly on this one um so yeah beautiful beautiful rebound 
perfect. I mean, I talked about this one yesterday. I said that keep your eyes on it. And, and the, yeah, we got that rebound. We pushed higher. <clears throat> the only issue here is the, the fact that we are still below all of the EMAs on, on our daily chart, which, yeah, it doesn't, uh, doesn't really kind of, uh, you know, give too much positivity. Um, and by the way, I've drawn this line. This, this didn't save. There we go. This is where I, I drawn the line here. So it's still, um, it's still holding up here. I mean, it's still holding up to, you know, near this, near these EMAs. So if we do push above those and we do climb somewhere above this 129.65 level approximately around there, then yeah, we could maybe, uh, consider maybe a move towards this downside line because at the moment if it if it is the case i mean we we're, we might be seeing a bit of coiling up here on this pair so uh we might see a bit of movement inside here in this pattern in in between the two lines so kind of pr don't be surprised if that happens um and finally euro usd guys very quickly on that one and uh here yeah we have a uh, pair which uh, managed to recover and uh, yeah so we managed to recover we managed to jump back above this highlighted territory I said that if we do stay below it then uh, we will continue aiming lower but we jumped back above it of course the weaker uh, dollar did play out nicely here for, for euro USD um, in general I think that's going to be a bit of a, um, a weird week for uh, for the euro uh, we do have the German employment numbers coming out today so we'll keep an eye on those um, but then I think let me just uh, double check the economic calendar uh, this week I think that on Thursday yes we'll have the um, the ECB um, is this the case just a second guys yeah okay so on Thursday um, Where's that Thursday? Come on, load up. Yeah, okay. It's terrible. Sorry for the moment of silence here. So yeah, we do have the ECB coming out with the interest rate decision. Um, no surprises there, but, uh, and then um, 45 minutes after that, we'll have the press conference with Christine Lagarde. So, you know, we can have some movement then. So don't be surprised if, for example, <clears throat> uh, Euro USD will stay right now, let's say quiet um, up until then. Um, but then of course, on Friday, we also have the NF uh, NFPs, uh, from the U S. So yeah, it's quite an eventful week here, I would say. And, uh, let's see how that's all that is going to play out here. Uh, but for now I will be very careful in the Euro. And if we're looking for some upside, I would need to see a push back above this downside line, to be honest. Um, if we're looking for some downside, um, I would need to see a drop back below this highlighted territory where the lower level is around the 1.1169 level approximately around there i mean i'm not of course uh, we could take a look at the at this little territory here uh, let me just uh, grab this one this um oh by the way this upside line can go uh, not to overcrowd uh, crowd the chart but we of course we can keep an eye on the lowest the current lowest point of, or actually the lowest point of january near the 1.1121 but i will start looking already at the downside if we do drop uh below actually this is where i need to adjust a, thing, a few things here if we drop below this inside swing high of the one at, at 1 1.1173 74 zone and then yes we will go uh from there so yeah, keep your eyes on that one, guys. Uh, like I said, quite quite an eventful week. Could be could see some movement at the end of this week on Euro USD. So guys, okay, thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, kind of viewing this uh, recorded session. Um, like I said, this week uh, we'll have to kind of you know go with those. Um, next week I'll refer uh, back to the live session. So yeah, um, I hope you found this video useful, guys. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And uh, yeah, I'll see catch my video tomorrow morning. Uh, um, also somewhere around uh, maybe a little bit after seven o'clock, uh, you know, seven, seven o'clock GMT time once I get a chance to properly upload everything. So, um, so yeah, thank you very much and have a wonderful trading day. Bye-bye.